All right, everyone, let's talk about the interesting topic today of fish oil. A lot of people have been asking me about this. So I put together, um, we're actually gonna cover 80 studies in this video. Uh, we'll do it in the most entertaining way possible. There is a lot of research showing that uh, what we've been told about fish oil is not true. Uh, fish oil is a strange phenomenon. I, I always thought it was a strange phenomenon. Um, you know, when you really think about it, it's like, why would it be such a conventional wisdom um, item, you know, of, of tidbit of knowledge that fish oil is just essential for us to, to use, right? It's, it's very strange. And, and in this video, uh, we're going to break down the history of where the fish oil fad came from. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the problems in a lot of the the uh, claims that are being made about fish oil. And, it, and it's just, you know, increasingly strange to me why this became a thing and why nobody questions it. So let's get into the video. So fish oil is very high in polyunsaturated fats and it easily can go rancid because of this. Most fish oils on the market are actually rancid before they get to the consumer. It's extremely difficult to manufacture a fish oil properly. And I know a lot about manufacturing. I own a supplement company, Truth Nutra. It's, it's nearly impossible. You'd have to jump through a lot of hoops to manufacture a fish oil properly um, in order to make sure the oil is not rancid by the time it even gets into the capsule or in the jar. So where did this fish oil fad come from? All right, so let's examine the idea that, you know, we've been told that we need these omega fatty acids uh, to function properly. And uh, the idea that we need to get these types of fatty acids specifically from fish oil. I think I would recommend fish oil probably even more strongly than that, uh, just because I feel like you would actually have to eat quite a lot of fatty fish per week. It's something like four or five solid servings of salmon a week in order to get enough EPA, DHA. I think from a cost perspective, if nothing else, like if you're doing it to hit, like you said, the, the EPA or DHA quota, fish oil is a kind of an, an economical way of doing it mm -hmm. from a, a cost perspective, but like I say, also potentially from a calorie perspective because there's such high fat content. And in, in terms of the health benefits, I think there is some pretty solid literature showing it to improve blood lipid profile, um, lower triglycerides, lower blood pressure, um, and there's even some new data showing it might improve body composition and, and performance in terms of strength in the gym, but the data is kind of limited at this point, I think. I think the general recommendation is one gram of combined EPA DHA per day. I'm also going to look through a bunch of studies, I'll show them to you, uh, about the negative hormonal effects and other effects of consuming fish oil. All right, so let's look at the beginning of the fish oil myth. Now, fish oil is high in DHA and EPA, which are commonly seen to be beneficial for heart health by doing things like lowering blood pressure, reducing inflammation, reducing risk of stroke and heart attack, and reducing the chance of abnormal heart rhythms. However, there is very little to no evidence that actually supports this theory, and it's actually been seen as common knowledge throughout the entire health industry, which is very strange. Again, instead of questioning whether or not fish oil is beneficial to health, doctors have basically just passed down this common idea throughout the decades, not realizing the detrimental effects that it can have on human health. The first recorded prescription of fish oil was in 1789 in Manchester, and it was used for the alleviation of joint pain in an elderly woman. Now, the woman had severe joint pain and was unable to function properly. The doctor prescribed her cod liver oil to be used topically and ingested at the same time. Uh, her issues with the joint pain went away. Exactly one year later, her issues came back, and they were alleviated once again by using fish oil. There were a couple things that the doctor didn't really take into account, however, uh, and the first being that she was actually taking other medication to help with the same problem. So there were some confounding factors to, to even just this concept that the fish oil was the cause of getting rid of her joint pain. Uh, it may have been correlated, but it wasn't necessarily the cause. There was no proof of that. The second thing was that the woman had the same issues at the exact same time of year which could have easily been an issue with the barometric pressure of the atmosphere during that time of year, putting more pressure on her joints. So there were a lot of confounding elements to this, yet the fish oil myth was born from this case study. All this being said, let's look at whether or not fish oil is actually even healthy. We're gonna examine the other claims that people are making. Now fish oil is made up of almost, if not purely, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Now this is ideal actually for a fish because a fish lives in the cold environment and they need the fatty acid composition of their body to actually be a liquid at these low temperatures in order to survive. 
if the main uh, fatty acid chain of, of fish oil or you know the, the fats in the fish were actually saturated fats, uh, they would not actually be able to live in this cold water, and they would, you know, it, because the saturated fat would not be a liquid; it would be a solid at that temperature, and they'd basically die. So, however, due to the nature of this fat, it's actually not ideal for the human body. And there, there's like countless amounts of research, just mountains of research, showing that polyunsaturated fats are not good for human health. This means that the fat is really only stable at these low temperatures, and when it's exposed to any kind of higher temperatures or in the presence of light the fats actually become oxidized. And now when they're oxidized, they produce a lot of free radicals that wreak havoc on the sensitive tissues in the human body, especially the reproductive organs, the thyroid, and the brain. Now obviously this means that cooking with these types of fats is out of the question, uh, which it's strange that also, you know, a lot of, uh, pretty much every restaurant on earth seems to use polyunsaturated fats for their cooking, uh, which is ill-advised. And uh, I would like to raise the awareness of this and so we can change it, make our, our eating out a lot healthier for people. But what about the famous fish oil supplements? The ones that are supposed to actually help with joint pain by lubricating your joints and to help decrease inflammation. Uh, sadly, it's a complete lie about the, the inflammation and the joint issues. Uh, during the manufacturing process, the fish oils are exposed to both heat and light, causing them to become oxidized. And then when they're put into storage, they're exposed to even more light and more heat, uh, especially during shipping, where shipping trucks can reach temperatures of over 150 degrees. Now this leads to the impossibility of fish oil supplement that is not oxidized and that thus does not contain free radicals. Like I said, it is very, very difficult to manufacture a fish oil supplement that will not become oxidized in somewhere along this process. I know that I know there are people out there that are trying to make that happen, but uh, due to just a lot of, uh, you know, reality in general of, of the nature of this type of oil interacting with heat and light, uh, it is very, very difficult to do. So now, it can also significantly reduce joint pain, stiffness, and medication needs in people who have rheumatoid arthritis, which will lead to painful joints. So this actually leads to more inflammation in the human body when you consume this type of stuff and it causes even more joint tissue and brain damage. Now the question comes about is like what if you were able to find a fish oil supplement that's not oxidized and that was extracted properly and makes it all the way from the fish to you in one piece without being oxidized. The problem is that it's, to be fair to the researchers just taking omega-3 fats alone isn't going to isn't really going to protect your brain and your heart from vascular disease. You need, you need a more comprehensive study, st uh, strategy rather, of which omega-3 fats are part of that strategy. So uh, the likelihood of this is, is very, very slim, though these things likely do exist somewhere out there. Uh, however, when you consume the fish oil, it also does the exact same thing unless you have some kind of crazy encapsulation process uh, because your body heat is enough to oxidize a polyunsaturated fat. The, the body, the human body is a relatively high heat, uh, especially when compared to the fish and the stable uh, uh, temperature of the fish in the water that it's usually in, um, you know, that a codfish or a salmon or that sort of thing where the fish oil is coming from, um, they're usually in cold water. It's actually uh, going to oxidize, this fish oil will oxidize in the presence of the heat in the human body. It's called auto oxidation, which is the automatic oxidation of the fish oil as soon as it's in the presence of the body. Basically, this leads to the formation of free radicals and all of the contributing downregulating effects. So Scientists uniformly believe that fish oil is the better method for absorbing See, those things. But then you go online hmm. and you look up fish oil and hmm. there's just as much, as many articles that fish oil does nothing. Well, omega-3s and 6s are critical. Right. That's what fish oil is. We just I mean, know. Oh, just, so you get that yeah. from the fish oil. Yeah. So a lot of the claims of fish oil benefits, um, you know, things that people are talking about fish oil supposedly helping with, have actually been completely debunked. They've been proven wrong, but uh, that research hasn't surfaced, so I'm going to talk to you about it today. People claim that fish oil can help prevent diabetes. That's been proven wrong. People claim that it can help prevent obesity. That's been proven wrong. People claim that it can help lower blood pressure. It doesn't at all. People claim that it helps improve cardiovascular health. It actually does the opposite. And people also claim that it helps with your brain. It does not. Chia seeds and flax seeds are packed with omega-3 fatty acids. And last but not least, the majority of people today should be taking a quality omega-3 supplement 
in the form of fish oil or cod liver oil. Fish All right, so to prove my point, to prove that what I'm saying is right, I've got 80 studies I'm gonna cover here. We'll cover them quickly, uh, but I'm gonna link them all also below uh, this video in, in the description so you can check them out. So first we're gonna talk about the oxidation and free radical studies. In this study, they show that fish oil supplements are rancid and most likely do not know the original source from where they come from or even the age of the supplements, which makes, uh, makes it even more obvious that there's a high likelihood for um, the oxidation to happen and, and the rancidity because the, there, there's not really even a tracking system for most, most uh, origins of fish oil. Now this study shows a considerable number of fish oil supplements that are rancid. Uh, it's, it's a big survey on them. Uh, now here's, here's a, a piece in Nature uh, that shows a terrible amount of rancid fish oil and fish oil containing way less of potentially beneficial compounds than stated. Uh, they, they looked through it all and they, and they found a, a woefully terrible um, you know, survey of, of the available supplements. Uh, now this study shows a high prevalence toward DHA being oxidized. Uh, right here we see another um, uh, basically super easy way that fish oil gets oxidized itself. And then uh, in this one, it shows the uh, reality of, of oxidation of the oils in storage. This one shows that fish oil automatically oxidizes, the auto oxidation, like I said, and shows the possibility of stacking fish oil with vitamin E to reduce the damage from peroxidation. So again, this one confirms auto oxidation byproducts that are formed from ingesting fish oil. And then this one shows and confirms the oxidative byproducts um, and the relationship with the free radical pathways in the body from consuming fish oil. Now this study shows actually that taking fish oil in conjunction with exercise makes the oxidative stress after exercise even worse. So it's definitely not, a, a, uh, not looking like a very healthy supplement here. Here's another study confirming that the EPA uh, is responsible for ele elevated oxidative stress. Here's a study confirming the increased uh, superoxide accumulation within the cells from consuming this oil. And then here's a study that shows uh, lipases for the pathway of cellular swelling are formed by these free radicals. Now in this study they uh, basically used omega-3 fatty acids on rabbits and they saw and confirmed that these fatty acids were toxic to the liver of rabbits because of the oxidation process. Now in this study they confirmed that fish oil consumption increases spleen degeneration and acceleration of membrane lipid peroxidation. So that was a lot of the research confirming that um, fish oil consumption does cause free radical damage and oxidation in the body. Now let's look at the heart-related claims. Now this study shows that it doesn't actually have any effect on blood pressure uh, when you consume fish oil in an overall group. Uh, that's contrary to the fact that all these positive claims about fish oil say that it helps with blood pressure. Now this, this uh, research actually shows an increase in heart disease due to increased methylmercury because of fish oil consumption. This study confirms, the researchers confirmed that fish oil does not reduce heart issues and can actually be pro-arrhythmic. And again, that's confirmed by this study that shows no protection toward arrhythmia with fish oil. And uh, this one also confirms along the same lines, basically negative effects of fish oil on tachycardia. It's not good for your heart. Now again, on the lines of heart disease, this study shows no beneficial effects in arterial disease. So a lot of people use statins to, to help with their heart-related issues, uh, but this study shows actually that the PUFAs cannot be modified by statins. Now a lot of the claims say that, that fish oil consumption can help prevent uh, heart disease. However, this study right here uh, basically concluded that it provides absolutely no decrease in the risk of heart disease. In fact, this study confirms that PUFAs actually speed up the atherosclerotic process, so it could actually make heart disease even worse. And again, along the lines of heart disease actually getting worse from it, this study confirms it by showing an increase in ischemic progression after the supplementation with PUFAs. Now let's take a look at the claims and debunking the claims around fish oil preventing diabetes and fish oil preventing obesity. So the researchers in this study concluded that it at all does not reduce the risk of gestational diabetes. And then this one um, confirms that it doesn't do anything for infant obesity risk. 
Now, this study actually shows that it makes um, your blood glucose levels worse. This study confirms that by showing basically no advantageous effects of any insulin biomarkers. And then this one actually shows negative effects on glucose metabolism, and that's from the Diabetes Journal. This study confirms the reason why it's messing up with messing with your, your blood glucose is actually that lipid peroxidation inhibits glucose uptake. Now, contrary to what a lot of people think that insulin resistance is caused by carbohydrates, it's actually not. This study proves that insulin resistance forms in high fat fed rats. Now, contrary to what most people believe, people think uh, because of all the, the you know nonsense going around with the keto diet right now, people think that that insulin resistance is caused by carbohydrates. In fact, this study proves that insulin resistance is caused by feeding of high fat. In fact, the EFA deficiency is actually protective against diabetes, which is confirmed again in this study of showing essential fatty acid deficiency still being beneficial to prevent diabetes. So this study confirms that free fatty acids reduce responsiveness to glucose dependent insulin secretion. So it's actually making that worse. And then this study confirms that fish oil consumption actually adversely affects glycemic control. So it makes you ride the blood sugar roller coaster even worse. Now let's talk about the adverse brain effects of fish oil. Now this study confirms that arachidonic acid actually causes brain swelling and mitochondrial dysfunction. This study confirms that fish oil has the potential to induce vasogenic and brain edemas. This study shows that PUFAs actually cause an increase in membrane permeability and cellular swelling, which can occur in the brain. This shows another case where PUFAs are actually responsible for brain swelling. This one shows that a metabolite from PUFA is directly related to increase in neuronal death and Alzheimer's. And then this one confirms that arachidonic acid induces inhibition of neurotransmitter uptake. And contrary to what everyone says about omega-3s being healthy for your brain, this study right here confirms that omega-3 actually dampens neuronal activity. Now let's talk about mitochondria and the relationship with fish oil. So like I mentioned earlier in that previous study, the arachidonic acid actually causes brain swelling and mitochondrial dysfunction. That consuming fish oil or omega-3s led to higher levels of docosahexaenoic acid or DHA in the hippocampus portion of the brain. Higher levels of DHA within that portion of the brain mean more memory function, more mental clarity, and more focus. The simple thing that you can do is start supplementing with fish oil pills. That's really plain and simple. You can also start eating foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids, foods like salmon. Uh, ischemia and mitochondrial dysfunction are also, again, in this study, confirmed to be uh, caused by arachidonic acid. This study confirms right here that PUFAs actually inhibit mitochondrial respiration. Now, this study right here proves that omega-3 has absolutely no beneficial effect on mitochondrial membrane integrity. And then this study shows that arachidonic acid causes dysfunction in mitochondrial electron transport chain. Now let's talk about fish oil and cancer. So this study actually shows a relation to an increase in prostate cancer. It is a very weak relation, however, the relation exists. This study correlated a uh, fish oil diet in rats to actually causing colon cancer. Now this study confirms that when the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is out of whack, it can contribute uh, to a lot of cancer growth in the body. This study shows a positive association between fish consumption and breast cancer in women. And then this shows a relation of omega-3 consumption to a decrease in lifespan and no role for improving metabolism at all. All right, we're gonna now DNA damage. There's actually research showing right here that excess DHA consumption can actually cause DNA damage. Here's a study showing fish oil consumption causes an increase in lymphocyte sensitivity to cortisol. And then this study proved that cortisol levels are 50% higher in patients that are supplementing with fish oil. Now with that kind of a negative hormonal effect, you might think that it's gonna show other effects and it certainly does. Uh, this study shows a decrease in FSH in women who are consuming fish oil. Now there are a lot of uh, toxicity issues with fish oil as well, especially when you can't trace the origin. And this shows the toxic effects of this methyl mercury that's common in fish oils. Now this study also confirms that there's a detrimental threshold to DHA consumption in rats due to the harmful toxicity effects. Now people also say that fish oil is good for psoriasis. However, in this study they put fish oil head to head against corn oil, which is also is a very cheap oil, 
and it was literally no better than corn oil. Now, a lot of people also say it like it'll help your brain. I already showed that it actually hurts your brain. Uh, but with relation to mental illnesses, uh, this study right here confirms that there are absolutely no effects, positive or negative, for mental uh, psychological disorders when uh, consuming fish oil. And this another study confirms that, again, fish oil has no effect on mental illness. In fact, a lot of people say that fish oil helps with longevity. Uh, it does the opposite. Now this study confirmed that fish oil actually increases intercurrent mortality. And these two studies also confirm that, that there is a relation with the high omega-3 consumption with a decrease in life, lifespan. And then this shows that longevity is related to actually low levels of unsaturated fatty acids. So with relation to immunity, fish oil actually suppresses the immune system. Here's another study that shows that it negatively affects the T-cell pathway. And again, another confirmation in this study of PUFA negatively affecting T-cell immunity. So now that we know the detrimental effects of fish oil and their accompanying PUFAs, what can we do to mitigate these effects? Because obviously in your everyday life, especially in today's society, you're not gonna be able to go anywhere uh, where you can really truly avoid PUFAs unless you, um, unless you cook all of your own meals and that sort of thing. So what can you do? Uh, the big thing that I recommend is taking a very healthy dose of vitamin E every single day and vitamin E is going to help to mitigate the effects of the PUFA damage. I would also obviously stop taking fish oil if you are currently taking fish oil. Uh, now with Truth Nutra, I want to make sure that I'm clear that uh, it was until recently that I didn't really know much about all of this, this mountain of research showing just terrible effects of fish oil. I don't, I've never made a fish oil supplement and I don't intend on doing it. However, we have a very small amount, we had a very small amount of DHA in our supplement Cortigon. Uh, it, was, it was a very small amount, so it wouldn't amount to showing any negative effects. And actually the, the, um, the reviews on Cortigon, Cortigon is our most reordered supplement. Like people love it because it really helps them with their anxiety and their stress and, and regulating their cortisol. However, I am constantly trying to to make myself better, make my company better, make my formulas better. So uh, we actually are now just now releasing a brand new Cortigon formula. We will not. We have stopped selling the Cortigon formula that has the DHA in it. We got rid of the DHA. It will no longer be in the Cortigon formula. So if you want to check out Cortigon, I'll put a link near this video. Uh, you can check out the brand new Cortigon formula. I know a lot of people are really, really stoked about it and it will not have any omega-3 fatty acids in it. Another thing is that a lot of people's diets contain a massive amount of PUFAs. As you've seen in this video, I've also done other videos on PUFAs and the negative effects of PUFAs. Uh, I actually, uh, this was one of the driving factors of, of writing the Thermo Diet and having this Thermo philosophy. And now we have an amazing Thermo group of people that are doing it right now. I mean, it was just, I literally just read before I recorded this video, I read a testimonial in the Thermo Facebook group of a guy who's lost 40 pounds in six weeks with thermo uh, the thing is is when you're avoiding and getting rid of the PUFAs your body starts to naturally come back into a state of balance so if you want to figure out how you can use the thermo diet to make your health better uh, I made a tool a quiz over at thermodiet.com that identifies it helps you identify which body type you are so if you're a liver body type what things you need to focus on if you're a thyroid body type what things you need to focus on or a pituitary body type and that'll help you kickstart your health journey on the thermo diet so you can go over to thermodiet.com and check it out thanks for watching this video share this with people who need to know share this with people who still believe that fish oil is healthy for them because the mountain of research we covered 80 studies in this video show the exact opposite of what everyone says and uh, just because something's conventional wisdom does not mean it's true so uh, think critically Keep on keeping on. I'll see you on the next video.